IBM friends. First, let me thank everyone who has left me words of encouragement about my YouTube channel. I should really be thanking you because it keeps me busy and away from thinking about the tragedy this disease of inclusion body myositis has become for me. In this episode, I'm going to share with you one of the more wackier ideas I've had that I had hoped would work for me and in many respects has turned out to be a success. Yes, you read that title right. I got an exoskeleton on trial and used it for about 20 days. I hope you stay tuned for more information. The definition of an exoskeleton is an external wearable framework that augments a human's natural physical ability. Just so you don't get the wrong impression, the robotic exoskeleton gizmo that I tried is for one arm only. But that's okay, because at this stage I'm in, in inclusion body myositis, I currently have next to nothing in either of my arms with the least in my right, so to be able to obtain additional use from one arm is a milestone of grandeur for me. And if I decide to purchase this device, it will only be a fraction of the cost of the full body exoskeleton models you are probably envisioning. Patients with inclusion body myositis type of muscular dystrophy and are in the late stage usually have decreasing upper extremity strength and range of motion that limit activities of daily living. I'm evaluating the ability of the Wilmington Robotic Exoskeleton, or you may have seen it abbreviated as WREX, Rex, and was hoping to improve my active range of motion and some independence that I can reassume with activities of daily living. I would determine the Rex a success if I could reach out away from my body in the forward and lateral directions and increase my reach abilities. To shorten the story a little bit, I received the Rex trial kit on March 8th and immediately my wife and I assembled the kit and installed it on my Quantum Edge 3.0 power chair. Assembly was straightforward following the instructions, but the most important adjustments required are that the pivot points are correctly positioned when your body is sitting relaxed with your back against the backrest. This exoskeleton depends on resistance bands to assist with arm movement. The product worked well for assisting my biceps but lacked the ability to adequately bring my forearm in near my face for hygiene purposes or for feeding. After countless number of adjustments including discussing the shortfalls with the vendor, I had to come to the realization that this exoskeleton system would not work with a diminished degree of weakness in my right arm. The only cost associated with trying this exoskeleton test kit was return shipping after my evaluation. A search on the internet and on YouTube for other exoskeletons brought up a homemade version of one that appeared to work and could be redesigned to fit my power chair and my abilities. A shout out to Amy Hagerman's video that provided the seed for building an exoskeleton out of wood. I haphazardly started to make some concept drawings that were sized for use on my quantum edge. I contacted a retired friend who is also an avid and experienced woodworker and asked if he would like to jump into this project with me as I can no longer operate woodworking power tools. Thankfully, Bob, a retired engineer, jumped at the opportunity and took it on as a challenge to help my cause. Thank you very much, Bob. Within the first two weeks, I drew a concept exoskeleton using my CAD program, purchased some sealed ball bearings, and emailed the concept drawings to Bob, who could put his engineering expertise to good use. And he provided input that eliminated some unnecessary parts and improved the overall design. We also got together and discussed this project over lunch. To my amazement and delight, the next evening, which was a Tuesday, I received a photograph of the start of this project. By Saturday, Bob had completed the first prototype and wanted to schedule a prototype review and initial trial of our design. I could hardly wait for Easter holiday to pass so we could get together and give this concept a try. Upon arrival at Bob's house about 20 miles away, there sat our homemade exoskeleton ready to be installed on the power chair I was sitting on. 
To be able to install and remove the exoskeleton from the power chair without any tools, our mounting plate was sandwiched between the seat cushion and the seat plate of the power chair. Bob and I agreed that more fore and aft tilt was required on a longer arm support. So a couple days later I received a text message with the updated arm support cuff and tilting mechanism. It was now time for another trip to Bob's shop and another prototype review. Now for more tests. As I attempted to move the three articulating upper links, I realized that I could reach about 15 inches further in front of me, to the left and to the right, with my right hand when compared to the absence of this exoskeleton. Prototype test number two, another success. At this point our homemade exoskeleton, costing less than $50 in parts so far, is doing for me what the commercial exoskeleton I tried did for me and more, but at a cost of nearly $2,000 less. Our homemade arm support had several advantages over the commercial exoskeleton I had previously tried. First it could be locked in a transport position to eliminate it from pointing up at the sky when not being used. Secondly, by driving the chair in so that the lowest horizontal link was placed under the tabletop, it provided adequate clearance for easily supporting my hand and forearm on top of the table. Thirdly, I could place the cuff in six different positions on my right arm, depending on whether I wanted to support my hand or my forearm, and I could even place it under my upper arm bicep. And just like the commercial version, I could vary the amount of upward energy by adding and subtracting resistance bands. So what can I do with this homemade wooden exoskeleton that costs less than $50 to make that I couldn't do before? Without it, my forward reach with my right hand and arm was almost non-existent. Now with this homemade exoskeleton, I can not only reach forward, but can also swing it above the table level to the left and to the right. Depending on the number of resistance bands installed on my exoskeleton, my arm elevation can go quite a bit higher than just the top of the table. Perhaps there's a few cleaning chores around the house that I will be able to do and maybe keep my computer desk a little neater. So why do I share my homemade invention with you? I don't expect any of you to follow my lead and build a one-arm exoskeleton system to fit your power chair, but the meaning of showing it to you was to show you how I never stop looking for ways to improve my current and future situation with IBM. I'd like to chat some more with you, but I gotta put on my thinking cap and come up with more ways to be able to cope with my inclusion body myositis. Until next time, keep reaching for the stars.